upend your belief that you understand and know what's going on. Because that is the way, it's the only way that you can learn self-observation. Because the nat nature of self-observation is impartiality. It is objective. And when we're looking at ourselves and who we are and what's going on, how we're taking in the information, then we, we have to, it's like looking at our own eyeballs if we're trying to be objective. So we have to have certain tactics to, to look at this. So I want you to believe nothing that I am saying. I want you to believe not a word that I am saying. And I want you to verify it in your own experience. And that's that. So as I'm giving you these ideas about how to objectively <coughs> look at what's going on, you have to figure it out for yourself. That's why I can't answer your question. And that's why from now on, I'll probably say, I can't answer that question. Because I rob you of your experience. If I keep explaining, well, how do we do this? I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to say, here, here's the experiment. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go out there, see what you see. And so the aim, the aim is to provide information about the habitual state of consciousness that we live in. Because that is what we are living from. It's habitual, emotional, and, and modes of thinking so that we, we can't really get to what's actually going on. Now the reason why we're using sensation is because the body takes in the information the fastest. In, in, instinctive and if, 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 if I'm walking down a path and I see a snake and I hear the snake and I see the snake, my body's going to jump off that path faster than it took for me to, to figure out what's going on. Before, before I know it, my body has already jumped off the path and into safety, right? And, and my body has got adrenaline going. And once I'm in safety, I will probably be experiencing how my body has, is reacting and that I'm scared and that, oh shit, I almost stepped on a stake. That's the last thing to go, is the thinking. And what we have been, ed what's been educated into us, what has been um, formed in habitual conditioning, even the things that we think we are experiencing, they are habitual means of taking in information because we are stuck in our thinking. And oftentimes, we don't know if we're feeling or thinking or taking it in from a, a kinesthetic body situation. So, one of the things that self-observation is, is noticing something and not changing it. Now, if we notice something and we simply are like a, a, an experiment, a scientist, and we're watching what's happening within us, we, we see something or we feel something or we sense something, and the first thing to do with self-observation is don't change it. Because the, the thing that wants to change it is something that thinks, oh, I'm not doing this right. I need to change that. It's a part of us that is, is, is worried about, am I going to be judged by others? Am I making a mistake? It, you know, there's lots of different kinds of consciousness. And when we say self-consciousness, for example, when we're self-conscious, that's not the kind of self-conscious I'm talking about. That self-conscious is a heightened state of nervousness. What are people going to think? I might mess up. I walk out on stage. I go to do a speaking engagement. Oh no, you know, what is that all about? I'm so self-conscious. You know, or I walk into the room and I'm, I'm not dressed the same way as everybody else. Oh no, 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 I'm so self-conscious. I'm not talking about 
that kind of self-consciousness, right? There's four, four kinds of consciousness. We're either asleep, like we have no idea what's going on, we're driving, whatever we're doing, we're thinking, wow, yeah, I should have done all that stuff, because now I'm going to have all this, water. you know, and then you, you don't have to tell yourself, turn here, push on the gas, do this, you don't, you don't, you drive. I can have a full-on conversation with somebody and go, eh, and I'm, I don't have to think, oh, turn here, stop here, make your foot go up and down. We don't do that. We're, 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 we're not conscious like that. You know, we walk, our legs will walk. And we're not there, you know, feeling the ground and aware of our awareness of our, the Zen-like stepping on, the Buddha stepping and the flowers pop up after each step. That's, that's way advanced. That's self-consciousness. That is awareness that I am alive and here and knowing I am here and I'm doing this thing. Okay? So that's two steps beyond. Our first one is I'm totally asleep. I don't know what's going on. My, I'm in my thoughts. You know, all kinds of things are going on. I have no idea what it is. And then all of a sudden, you'll wake up. Like you see this, your external cue. And you go, oh yeah, here I am. But you weren't there before. So there's another state of consciousness is, okay, I'm awake. Right? But this third stage, this self-consciousness, is awareness of self and it's a very high state and that's where we're aiming but we got to start somewhere right the next kind of consciousness is cosmic consciousness it is enlightenment you do know what's going on you do know what's going on within you you have real choice and you can see okay so our aim is really to notice whether we're awake or self-conscious, the good kind of self-conscious. You see what I'm saying? So, now, the reason why we're using sensation for self-observation is because our body is in the present moment, and it's the thing that we, is underutilized of all of these three centers. We're going to be now looking at our three centers, and all of us predominantly take in information from one of these centers. Either our body, we're very kinesthetic, we, we experience all kinds of things, and all of us do, we can put our focus on, oh yeah, how's my body experiencing this anger? You know, you can, you can come at it, or you can feel anger. Let me, let me feel the anger. That's from our emotions. And, and you may not be aware so much of the body and, and all of its physical manifestations of anger. And then you may be the kind that is, well, he should have said this, and she should have said this, and dig 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 That's the thinking center. Okay? So which one are we coming from? And that's going to be now a good part of the course is which center am I coming from? And we'll talk more about the three centers next time. So we get, right now, it's self-observation. So what am I looking for? I'm going to try to use <clears throat> sensation and notice my inner state or notice simply what my body's doing or notice how I notice. Okay? But when I notice it, the main thing is I'm not going to change it because the minute I go, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. The ego's already, the, the like and dislike, the ego's already taken it away. And it's no longer an observation. The energy has now been taken by the intellectual, emotional complex of like, oh shit, I shouldn't be doing that, I shouldn't be feeling anger, I should be compassionate for these people. Right? I should be feeling compassion. That's all your ego. Fuck it. You know, you have to notice first and accept that what you see now you may not like. And that's excellent. That is excellent. We want to start noticing all the things, the ugly things that we have walled up and cover up so that other people think we're great. So that's what self-observation is. Now, we're going to do some things that we'll talk about um, in just a few minutes. Um, 
So we're going to break the illusion of how we see things. We're not going to change it as we observe it. And we're going to have things that we can glom onto, so it's going to make it a little bit easier. Um, and, and really, we're going after brutal self-honesty. And it's tough. And we're trying to observe phenomenon without analyzing, without putting, oh, this is, this is an interpretation. Um, so, I think that without embroidering it all over it, and we can just say, this is what I saw. We don't have to come to a conclusion. We don't have to see, how does that have significance in my life? Oh, we don't have to see that, oh yeah, because my mother tortured me, I, I can't relate to her, and that's why I'm doing this. None of that is observation. It's simply, oh, this is what I'm feeling. Don't change it. Observe it. Sit in it. And watch it. That's all. And see what happens from that. Don't let it get caught up in the energy of what we habitually do, because then we're not free anymore. And if you can s have self-observation, you're going to transform energy, and it's going to create a new kind of energy, and it's going to make you free. And it's going to lead to self-remembrance. And that is heaven on earth. That is why we're meant to be here. We're here to incarnate. And when we have to go through lifetimes of repeated, repeated pattern of learning, it is because we have not learned self-remembrance so that we can step out of pattern and understand what is before us. Okay?